Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where as always the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't and neither are my opinions. Today we're going to be talking about the organized Nebraska Nerfers, my thoughts on the event that I went to, and my opinions and a few bits of criticism I have. Um, all of this is honest and all of this is not hate, it's just me communicating to the mod team and what you guys know about my experience. Let's get into it. First off, if you are in Nebraska and you're looking for a group, um, I will be linking the Discord group in the description box below. If you're in Kansas City, any other place like that in the Midwest, this is a great group. They run a very tight ship, amazing games, and I've had a lot of fun nerfing with them. And I've only been to one event. I highly recommend you guys check them out. So check out the link in the description box below. Also, I do apologize for awkward angle. Can't really get a straightforward angle because of how my desk is. So, you know. It's a work in progress. We'll, we'll, we'll get it one day. Anyways, I want to talk about the, the event itself, the games, and the game types we played, uh, the roles, and just overall how I would say my experience went. So, let's start off with the, uh, the game types. Starting off strong, um, we had attack and defend, and this was a great game mode. I enjoyed it. It probably a little bit too much and we did have two sides one defending one attacking now I played both sides our teams were switching uh, sides and we switched teams enough to the point where it was enough variation I think and fair balanced teams as much as you realistically could get now when attackers were going to attack there was basically no cover and Right off spawn, there was a piece of cover that you could go to. I felt almost cheap and felt like I would be cheating if I was to go to that because it was basically right. It, it was basically right off spawn, and I didn't really like doing that. I didn't like being that close to spawn. Now that's just me personally because I don't want to get hit and then have people assume I'm just gonna sit there and count, which I wouldn't obviously do that. But we were backed off, or not backed off, we were um, confined in this little corner and right next to us was this kitchen and this venue. And the the kitchen was an access point for us to go through, we were allowed to go through there. And going through the kitchen, you know, plus behind their cover, but at the same time, it felt cheap and the uh, defenders were allowed to push up. They could push up and they could go through the kitchen and shoot through the kitchen. And like the kitchen was right there at our spawn. So it felt like you were very pressured and very forced to push to the point where it almost felt like it was a bit cheap and I didn't like it. Now switching over to defenders, I was very, very aggressive with defending. I did push up quite a bit actually as a defender and that's because I felt like I was able to. You had enough cover to the point where you just didn't really have to worry about much. And when defending, ironically I was pushing up, yes, but it got to a point where I was at this one spot and I'll, I'll put a photo up on screen and I was just, I, I felt way too close to them. And way too close to her spawn where it felt like I was just spawn killing them and I didn't want to do that So I, I would Jim and we said in my own footage. I'm like, I'm going to back off. I don't want to be a jerk Because I, I understood where they were coming from you feel so confined in uh, As an attacker now, that's not to say the attackers didn't have a few good rounds the attackers one of my teams we cleared out the other side before they started the timer <laughs> Which I think it was a little bit less than 30 seconds, which is freaking hilarious. And it was at least under a minute. And we just wiped the other team as attackers. We were coordinated, we were communicating, and it was great. And I loved it. However, it does not excuse, in my opinion, the lack of cover for the attackers. And, you know, I just, you felt confined. Again, I'll, I'll put like a, a photo of the layout up or something like that. So. Uh, let's move on to payload. Payload, you had a basket, you had to push it around, you could not carry it. 
I, I always don't think you could carry it. I think you had to push it. I could be wrong. It's been a little minute. It's, it's been a minute since I've, I was at the event. Um, and you had to go around collecting cones. Four cones, bring them back to your corner, aka your spawn point, and game ends. Now, this game mode felt fairly balanced because I believe cones were in very similar spots. I know one cone was in uh, the where defenders were far corner, uh, right if you're looking straight ahead of it. And it felt balanced. It, I was very happy and very surprised how balanced this felt being with the teams and everything. So I really did appreciate a nice balanced game mode and I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I, I can't really think of any issues with it at all. Um, so yeah, it was a good game mode and a lot of great games happened then. Let's move on to, uh, I guess my experience uh, walking in for the first time, kind of all that. And uh, then I'll go over some of the blaster stuff and all that. So walking in, I was incredibly scared. I was nervous. I was really worried. Um, I think that was just nerves. They were very welcoming. They're just like, hey, get your gear ready. And I, I was preloading mags on the way there because it wasn't like a, a three hour drive. It was like an hour drive or 48 minute drive, whatever it was. And, you know, loaded mags, ready to go right when I walked in. And I felt very welcomed and it was nice to have that feeling of, you know, we're just ball here to have fun. But also it was very casual and there was a little bit of competitive aspect to it and I really did appreciate that, you know, that people were wanting to, you know, win obviously, but also no one was salty about any games and I think that's a very important thing to have in a community and a group is no one's really complaining, no one had big issues, you know, I <laughs> got smacked in the face with a dart a few times, you know, I wasn't complaining about crap. Um, it, it was very nice to see that compared to other groups I've been to. And if you guys are wondering why I've been to other groups, it's because Outcasts have sadly disbanded across the country. So we are now a group across the country. Um, but we don't do like games in my area anymore, so I have to go find another group. That's why I'm talking about this. So, anyways, uh, blasters, rules, and a few things I just want to touch on regarding that stuff. Blasters, all right. This is Phantom, guys. You guys know what Phantom is. It's my new HVZ primary. I actually swapped out the cage and the motors and the flywheels. Um, it is now running a Worker 43.5mm crush cage, Worker smooths, and fan revamp motors. And I did all that to make it more efficient and uh, to actually lower the FPS of it to around 125 average and that's what I need it to be shooting mainly just because I don't want to be in that 130-140 mark like you know the uh, Fainars and containment crew wheels give me and I you know that's just how it is so now I have a, a spare set of those which I'll probably find something to do with but that's futures me problem um, I ran my foregrip on or my angled foregrip on there and then I ran the chrono barrel now a lot of people were actually shocked I was using this I was using this for ammo counting, not for FPS readings at all. I don't use my chrono barrel to do FPS stuff because I don't trust it enough. Now you can make these reliable, but I didn't want to really fiddle with it too much. I have you know, made sure that it is more accurate in terms of chrono, but that's not important. The important part was the ammo counting part. And I will say it is actually harder to focus on this little screen here and to make sure that you're not gonna run dry. Cause I wasn't running indicator rounds. I was running just a bunch of chili darts that I had that were crap. And I knew that once I brought them, well they weren't complete crap. They were the best condition ones I had. But I knew once I brought them, they were gonna be donated in, into that dart pool. And I was totally fine with that because I need to go justify buying new, dart <clears throat> buying new darts. So uh, this was the main blaster I ran. I also ran Phase X, which is a lawn shot modded by Tesra. And I had a rival pilot that's been modded to take shells. And that is a video to be done in the future. But this ran incredibly well, and I'm very happy with how this was performing. And 
this is with the 150 cap and then mid event we uh, took a vote to up the FPS cap and it was basically universally agreed upon to bump it up to 200. I was still running this and I didn't bring anything that even hit 150 or anything that hit 200. So I was able to get some good tags with it and I would say it does not come down to FPS, it comes down to skill. Now obviously I'm rusty, but regardless it performed well, it did well, it shot straight and I gotta test a few different new uh, types of ammo that I haven't tested in a long time. Hacky fakes and you know stuff like that. So it was a nice little change. Um, I ran my usual battle belts up, you guys have seen me use on stream before. Now, I would like to say the dart pool. That was wonderful to see that they had full lengths av uh, available. And I wasn't just gonna have to sit there for, you know, five, ten minutes and go scavenge all the darts I shot. And I was just going through magazine after magazine. And at one point I did have like different darts and different mags and whatever. I, I didn't care, I was just having fun. And it allowed me to really test this setup and everything, see what was going on with it and how well it was performing, so. Um, but they had, you know, numerous different types of full length, different types of half length. Um, they had rival available, which I thought was great to see. And they had, um, you know, other am uh, ammo types I'm probably forgetting about. And this, again, it served me well, did what it needed to do. Now, I will say, I do recommend playing it a bit safe when you go to a nerf uh, event for the first time, like a, lo a local group, because rules vary from uh, group to group. So, some FPS caps might be 200 out of the gate for their casual games. And some of them might be 100 FPS with outliers. So, I highly recommend going, you know, with at least one stock blaster. I brought a stock knife that was capable of running IMRs, my Gen 1. And I brought double A's and I brought IMRs. Because if this was turned away, for whatever reason, I would run that strife. And on top of that, I recommend going in with good attitude, obviously. But, this again it ran great I'm gonna I'm going in loops now but yeah that's that's what I gotta say about you know my, my blasters I brought and everything else I want to also talk about shields and touch on those real quick there was a one of the most genius things I think I've seen in a while it was a, a shield made out of a car bumper I thought that was hilarious and that was awesome to see because it's just cool I don't care who you are um, shields were capable of being taken out by Mega, I believe Mega XL, and Socks. You wanna know who brought Socks with them on a sock belt to a freaking casual game? I did. Apparently no one else did, which is whatever. Um, I actually, the night before, I asked the admin, uh, who I was in contact with, are Socks allowed? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, cool. I'm gonna be running Socks. And I... I did get a tag or two with them, I think it was like the last round or second to last round, I just completely ran out of ammo and I just went and got one or two tags with the sock. I did take out a shield at one point, I don't know if I caught that on camera, I really wish I did or hope I did, but it was balanced for shields in my opinion, I don't think you could be more balanced, so if you took a shield out great you know it helped your side the attackers to my knowledge were going ones with the shields uh, I don't think the defenders had shields when we were playing attack and defend so that's what I know about that and let's just get in my final thoughts my opinions and you know on, on the group I want to make this incredibly clear this is always going to be like a subjective take I can't be more objective in the information I've just pre uh, presented to you. So, this is my opinion. If you are in the Nebraska area, Kansas City area, go check the link down in the description box. There's going to be a Discord there and is to be organized Nebraska Nerfers. If you guys are interested, go check them out. Seriously, go check them out. I think they're a great group. I've had a lot of fun nerfing with them. I can't recommend it enough. 
it, it's been a great experience and I can't wait to go to more events, more games, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I, I just want to explain to you guys that, honestly, I haven't seen such an amazing group being run since, you know, Bold Outcast group, and it's awesome to see what they are doing. So, again, go check them out. Check out the Discord. And remember, guys, as always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't, and neither are my opinions. Stay safe. God bless. Phase 1 Foam signing off. Stay tactical.